Connecticut's number one local news. This is Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Good morning, everyone. I'm Wendell Edwards. Breaking news in Farmington this morning. A police officer there was struck by a stolen car on Talcott Notch Road. Police are telling us it happened just before one this morning. Officers say the suspects crashed in some nearby woods and then took off. And those suspects are still on the run. We're told the officer will undergo surgery later today, but is expected to be okay. Eyewitness News is your vaccine authority. This morning, we are learning nearly 20,000 people here in Connecticut have already received their third COVID booster shot. And more people could be joining that list once federal officials finalize their plans. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Christian Colon has all the details. Connecticut leaders say they are prepared to kick off their third dose initiative, but federal officials say not yet. So far, only the immunocompromised qualify. That was big for me uh, to, to get the third dose as soon as they told me I could have the third dose. Literally within a week, I went and, and had, had the dose. So uh, I didn't have any you know second thoughts about it. Bruce Adams got his new liver 11 years ago, so staying protected is his priority, which is why in April he went for his first and second dose, and now he has the third, and soon many others could join Bruce. It was just three days ago when the FDA panel supported that the 65 and older should get their third dose. Those. Now it's up to the FDA to make it official, something Dr. Anthony Fauci defends. I don't think they made a mistake, but the one thing I think people need to realize that data are coming in literally on a daily and weekly basis. Christian Colon, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Now to an update on that breaking national news story. Investigators are working to determine if remains found in Wyoming's Grand Teton National Park are that of 22-year-old Gabby Petito. She vanished during a cross-country trip with her fiancé, Brian Laundrie. Channel 3's Caitlin Francis has more on this developing story. The search for Gabrielle Petito appears to have come to a tragic end. A body matching the description of the missing woman was found by investigators yesterday at a campsite in Wyoming. Full forensic identification has not been completed to confirm 100% that we found Gabby, but her family has been notified of this discovery. The cause of death has not been determined at this time. Just after the news broke of the remains being found, Petito's father, Joe, shared a picture of Gabby on Twitter with a broken heart and the words, She touched the world. The 22-year-old's family had not heard from her since late last month when she contacted them from Grand Teton National Park. We continue to seek information from anyone who utilized the Spread Creek dispersed camping area between the dates of August 27th and August 30th. In July, Petito set out on a cross-country drive with her fiancé, Brian Laundry. On August 12th, a Utah police officer pulled their van over. The body cam video shows the couple in the middle of an emotional argument. I have been fighting all morning and... <laughs> And he would have let me in the car before. According to police, Laundrie was alone when he arrived at his parents' home in Florida on September 1st. He was named a person of interest in the case, but refused to speak to detectives before going missing last week. Our goal is to, to locate him and uh, bring him back to Northport. Laundrie's family believes he's somewhere inside the Carlton Reserve, a 24,000-acre wildlife refuge in Sarasota County. Caitlin Francis, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Police in Weathersfield are searching for a driver they say killed two people in a hit and run. And we're learning this unfolded on I-91 northbound near exit 27 early Sunday morning. This is right near the Hartford line. State police say several people had been standing in the roadway after being involved in the crash. As you can see from here when three of those people were struck by an oncoming car. Now one person was airlifted to the hospital. Two others were killed on the scene. The driver that hit them didn't stop, and troopers are now looking for a 2002-2004 blue Honda CRV. It has spare tire it fixed to the rear end, along with damage on the driver's front side. If you know anything, please call state police. In Las Vegas, police continue to investigate a deadly drunk driving crash that killed a New Haven police officer, Joshua Castanello, on Friday. Fellow New Haven police officer Robert Ferraro was driving at the time of the crash. She's now facing criminal charges in the case and an internal investigation. There were other officers in the car from New Haven. They had minor injuries. Ferraro is due in court tomorrow in Las Vegas. His bail has been set at $100,000. If you want to help, first responders are raising money in memory of the New Haven police officer Joshua Castellello. 
Fund, the fundraiser is on the crowdsourcing website, fundthefirst.com. We have a link right now on our Channel 3 app. 705, just a gorgeous start out there as we take a look at our stores, ICAM, bright golden sunshine to greet us this morning. A little bit of cloud coverage in the Connecticut River Valley, but not a big deal. Just enough cloud coverage to make for one absolutely gorgeous start, and it's going to be a beautiful day of weather today with our Doppler scanning the state dry. We have two tropical systems out there. We have Rose and Peter. Both look like they're going to stay out to sea as of this time. Uh, as you can see, there's Peter. Uh, basically weakening as it moves towards uh, Bermuda. And uh, there is Rose staying way out in the open waters of the Atlantic as it bangs a, uh, uh, a right turn into the north and to the east. So and that also becomes an area of low pressure. So it doesn't intensify. It actually weakens a little bit. That's good news. Back to the eye cams here in Connecticut, Old Saybrook. Beautiful. Wow. It is just gorgeous in Hartford with a temperature of 54. A little cool out there in parts of the state. 58 degrees in New Haven and uh, Litchfield at 47. A little bit cool there. Uh, sweater weather, 47 degrees. You've got Norwich at 51. Other parts of Norwich, though, coming in closer to 48. Wallingford, 54, and Meriden at 55. There's that 48 degrees I'm talking about in Norwich. Everybody else is in the low to mid 50s. 55, a popular number. In Chester, Meriden, and in Waterbury, in the dew points, very comfortable in the upper 40s and low 50s, so the air is nice and dry. And it stays that way today, tomorrow, uh, Wednesday it starts to climb with unsettled weather for Thursday and then Friday and Saturday we get back into the pleasant category. So it's another great start. Sunshine is expected today. Tomorrow looks pretty good too and then Wednesday mostly cloudy with passing showers. Satellite and radar confirms there's not a lot going on. You'll notice this rain train moving through uh, parts of uh, Georgia. You've got uh, Tennessee, Kentucky, on up into uh, Ohio and Indiana. All of this is eventually going to make its way towards us. By Wednesday, we're going to be under mostly cloudy skies with passing showers. And then a frontal boundary is going to move in for Thursday, and that's going to produce a pretty good amount of rain for Thursday here in our state, clearing by Friday morning. All right, so early morning future cast tomorrow's weather today. I'm not going to spend too much time on it because it's kind of a big old bore. I just ran the clock down through 10 o'clock. Tomorrow morning, we wake up to partly to mostly sunny skies. And then Futurecast is trying to hint at some passing showers tomorrow in the afternoon. They'll be very minimal if it does occur, and we're calling for partly to mostly sunny skies during the day tomorrow. All right, uh, this is Tuesday night into Wednesday. You'll notice Wednesday the clouds hang tough with some passing showers from time to time, and then Thursday looks a bit wetter than Wednesday. All right, daytime highs today, climbing to the mid to upper 70s, lots of sun. The sun was up at 636, that's at 651. And then your overnight lows tonight, not quite as cool, pretty close, but not quite as cool as they were this morning. Still some upper 40s and low to mid 50s. Mostly clear with patchy fog. And then your seven-day forecast includes another nice day tomorrow. Autumn arrives on Wednesday at 321 in the afternoon with mostly cloudy skies and passing showers and a fairly mild temperature, 78 degrees. Thursday is wa uh, wet with maybe even a passing thunderstorm. It'll be windy as well, 78 degrees. Friday morning clearing, and then Friday afternoon looks good, as does Saturday and Sunday. All right, that's a check of your early morning forecast. Wendell, we'll send it back to you. Thank you, Mr. Haney. In East Hartford, the 22nd annual Wishes on Wheels is perhaps the one time you don't mind seeing traffic on I-84. The truck convoy to benefit Make-A-Wish Connecticut hit this weekend in full throttle. Hundreds of trucks honked their way to Rentschler Field, hoping and helping raise money for a good cause. We have all of these truckers. They come not paid. They bring their own trucks. They spend hours and hours polishing them just to make money for our wish kids. To date, Wishes on Wheels donated more than $1.8 million to Make-A-Wish Connecticut. We're still working to learn how much was earned over the weekend. You can help just to click on this story on the Channel 3 app if you'd like to donate. That is our time for now. We thank you so much for tuning in to Eyewitness News on this Monday morning. Remember, news and weather updates anytime on the Channel 3 app. Happy Monday and have a great day. Thanks for watching Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Watch us live wherever you are on our mobile, on our streaming news app. And you can also watch us on Roku, Apple TV, and Fire TV.